What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. BDG. I'm rocking all the gear. I never thought I'd become one of those guys that like starts making his clothes and then just only that's the only thing he wears. Like any of you guys that have gone to college and didn't play sports and you walk around campus and it's just the athletes, right? Like you know what they play because it's literally like if someone plays on the basketball team. It's like a hat, t-shirt, a jumpsuit, sweatpants, like their fucking shoes somehow have the school's name with a, with basketball on it. That's what I feel like walking around sometimes with all my own fucking gear on it. These are all available for purchase, by the way. Links will be in the description. Today, we're talking about top 20 running back rankings for fantasy football, okay? The draft guide went live, so all of my rankings are up there. Doesn't matter what league you're in, PPR, standard, half PPR, one quarterback, super flex, two quarterback, whatever, whatever, whatever. We got all the rankings up there on BDGE dot store also linked down below we're going to run through the top 20 my top 20 running back rankings this year this is going to be for half ppr league so you can adjust accordingly to whatever your league settings are we're going to look at it versus ecr so expert consensus rankings i want y'all to understand something right there's a big competition in fantasy football that goes through this website called fantasy pros right fantasy pros are where all of the people who make content about fantasy football put their rankings through to have a little software which you, you rank the players and then it compiles everybody's data together at the end of the year they have this competition where it's like this person was a top five accuracy expert rankings person and the the problem with the competition that they have like you might see someone be like oh i've been a top 10 ranker for the last five years consecutively the way that this competition, the way that their software works is they penalize you pretty heavily for missing on guys by a wide margin. And by that, I mean, like the, the safer you play your rankings in fantasy pros, the better your score will be overall. So a lot of that shit is just nonsense and, 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 and just straight up bullshit. So it's like I tend to rank my running backs based on a lot of time it's upside, right? Because at the end of the day, you want league winning running backs. You want guys who have the capability to score you 20 plus points per game. That's how you get into the playoffs. That's how you win the fucking hardware. OK, otherwise. They're not much good to your team, right? Like a mid RB2 doesn't really push the needle for you. So when we have guys like, say, Antonio Gibson or something ranked, this is a bad example because he's probably going to finish around where I have him ranked. But this is just an example of what I mean. You have a guy who has really high upside. I want to rank him RB8 or RB9, even though it's really likely that he finishes as RB16 or 17, okay? But we want to shoot for upside. We want to shoot for guys that we think can actually win our leagues for us. A lot of guys, when they put their rankings into fantasy pros, will put that guy as the safe measure, RB14, RB15, although they'll be drafting him as RB8 or RB9. So just keep that in mind when it comes to rankings when you see, like I don't actually put into the expert consensus rankings because my a lot of my shit is super flex based, so it doesn't make sense. And they just opened up a super flex tab in their rankings for you to submit. So maybe we'll end up doing it this year or next year or some shit. But I just want y'all to take that with a grain of salt when you see people on Twitter that are like top five fantasy rankings, whatever the fucking nonsense is. All right. So we're going to be looking at my rankings versus ECR. We're going to be looking at my rankings versus ADP. And I don't even know where Fantasy Pros pulls in their ADP. To be honest with you, it's probably some free bullshit website like Fantasy Football Calculator. But I will link my best ADP source down below. 4 for 4 does a great job of pulling together different platforms that tell you where guys are getting drafted on paid platforms versus free platforms and all that kind of shit. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to compare my rankings to ADP to ECR, and we'll probably just touch on the guys that have the biggest gaps or the biggest differences in the rankings for me versus those guys. Okay. So y'all know what to do. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. More importantly, tuck your shirts in. Stop yelling. And let's eat. top of the list there should be no surprise here we have c-mac we have dalvin cook no difference then we have derrick henry i'm one spot higher on derrick henry versus ecr i just like i i i i i i i i i this is how flabbergasted i am by the fact that people are starting to fade derrick henry i get i get that he will never hit the ceiling of c-mac or dalvin cook because he doesn't catch passes but like you're not going to find a safer running back than derrick henry so i am not going to get cute i i've gotten questions like aaron jones or derrick henry i'm like dog dog what are we doing? What are you doing? Derrick Henry, number three. Ezekiel Elliott should be no surprise. Number four, Alvin Kamara at number five. I have a little bit below consensus there. Aaron Jones, I have at six. 
you know, I don't want to dive into all the top players. I feel like I've talked about all like the top 10 guys so much, so much already this offseason. But I love Zeke because Dak is back. And if you look at the splits with Dak under center last year, the offense was dynamite. Zeke was on pace for like 90 plus targets. He's going to be heavily involved on the goal line. Obviously, their offensive line is healthy again. He's going to be involved in the pass catching work. So he has a, a ton of upside to finish as an elite fantasy running back once again. Alvin Kamara, I have him at five rather than like top three or whatever, because I think this offense has a chance of just being kind of shitty with whoever quarterbacks them right now. And they don't have playmakers in the offense besides Alvin Kamara. Could be a good thing for volume, but also could be something that stifles the offense if the defense just zones all the way the fuck in on Alvin Kamara. So I think he still has a, obviously a really, really safe floor in the pass catching game. I have Aaron Jones up at six, which is even with expert consensus rankings, it's three spots ahead of ADP. And ADP is always going to lag a little bit behind just because I think the ADP that they pull from is from free league. So anything that happens, it's always going to be a little bit lag behind on that ADP because they're taking ADP data from like March, May, whatever. And a lot of that will factor in, you know, when Aaron Rodgers wasn't here or whatever, shit like that. So take that with a grain of salt. But you can also see like the difference between my rankings, ECR and like what free play uh, free platforms are going to be like when you're drafting with friends or family. If you're in a non-competitive league, the column on the right there is probably going to be like the most similar to what you guys see on draft day if you're not in like a super sharp league. So I have Aaron Jones up at six. I think, I mean, we've seen the upside with Aaron Rodgers and that offense, great offensive line. Though I think here's the thing with uh, Aaron Jones. See, I have him ranked up there at six, though I think his bus probability is higher than most people are giving it credit for or whatever the opposite of that would be. Most people are nervous about. One, Corey Lindsley, their all-pro center, moved over to the Chargers. David Bakhtiari, I believe, is going to miss like the first month of the season. So they have a few problems on the offensive line. A.J. Dillon is also like there. If A.J. Dillon ends up taking 600 to 700 rushing yards plus like half the goal line work when we look back on it a year from now and we say wow how did we not see that coming after all the reports of AJ Dillon getting a big workload we're gonna feel pretty fucking dumb so there's a chance there's a chance I'm not saying it's likely but there's a chance that AJ Dillon does factor into this offense and take way more carries from Aaron Jones than we're originally anticipating he's still at number six so the upside is real the chance of him catching 60 to 70 passes is real the chance of him getting 12 plus rushing touchdowns again very real so he's up there because he has league winning type upside if I was playing safety I might have I might move him back and and push a guy like Najee Harris up a little further because I know his volume floor is so 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 concrete right behind Aaron Jones we have Austin Eckler I have Eckler at RB7 three spots above ECR three spots above ADP Eckler's another guy that I think has league winning upside this offense is going to be amazing we talk about the Packers losing Corey Lindsay Corey Lindsay all pro center moves over to the Chargers. The Chargers also take Rashawn Slater. The, tar the Chargers signed two to three more offensive linemen that were pretty good in free agency that will go under the radar because no one knows offensive linemen, but their line is going to be the most improved in the NFL by far. They have Justin Herbert coming into his second year. They have a new coach finally. They have a new offensive coordinator, so they don't have to worry about fucking Anthony Lynn stifling Austin Eckler's production. He's going to catch 100 balls this year. The question comes in, does he get any goal line work? Now, my original thought process on this was, okay, Anthony Lynn is gone. Anthony Lynn's always been a type A kind of guy whoever's the fat running back he puts on the goal line no matter who it is it's never Austin Eckler it's it's Melvin Gordon when he's there when Melvin Gordon was gone Austin Eckler got the goal line carries and looked phenomenal but the following year it was Josh Kelly it was Caitlin Balazs whoever tips the scales at a higher number is going to get the goal line carries with Anthony Lynn gone I'm thinking okay maybe they change that up a little bit and they just put the best goal line back you have Joe Lombardi coming over from the Saints and he's seen right I know he's a quarterback's coach but he's seen what they did with Alvin Kamara and how successful Kamara's been on the goal line scoring touchdowns so maybe they transfer that knowledge over and say hey maybe we put the best running back on the goal line rather than just the fattest running back on the goal line I don't know if that's going to be the case to be honest with you this is another like risky top ranking where I think if Eckler does get goal line carries this dude can easily finish as like a top three top two the number one overall running back in fantasy if he doesn't I still think he has a nice pass catching floor he's obviously a lot more valuable in a stand uh, in a PPR league half PPR league if you're in a standard league uh, Eckler you'll have to obviously grab my ranking to the draft guide on bdge.store. Sorry, I'm going to slow down my talking a little bit. <sighs> Breathe, Nicholas. Austin Eckler will move significantly down the rankings in standard leagues because there, you know, the range of, you always look at the range of outcomes. There's a range of outcomes where Eckler scores five total touchdowns this year. There's a range of outcomes where he catches 100 passes and scores 11 total touchdowns this year, and that would put him in the RB1 conversation. So Eckler's a guy I'm willing to swing and possibly miss on in the first round because his upside is so high. Saquon's down at eight. This is where it gets a little bit dicey. If you're in a super flex league, I'm, I'm probably looking at maybe the second 
tier of quarterbacks or the first tier quarterbacks. You're you're starting to debate Devontae Adams or Saquon Barkley here. Saquon clearly has not been 100% yet getting back to practice. Haven't, haven't seen him in preseason games. So the ACL recovery is still very much a concern. The offensive line in New York stinks. This offense might stink. So there are a lot of red flags of Saquon. We obviously know the upside is there because he's just the most athletic specimen on the the planet. So Saquon is where things get a little bit dicey. And now we have a little bit more of, of big movements here. I have Najee four spots ahead of ECR at RB9, and I just moved him up recently. I have him two spots ahead of ADP, and I talked in depth about Najee Harris on Sunday's video, Must Own Running Backs. So three of my favorite running backs to draft that I'm not leaving any of my drafts with in fantasy football this year. Make sure you go check out that video. It's on the channel. Just type in Must Own or Must Draft or whatever, or just look at the most recent fucking videos that I put up. Talked really, really in depth about Najee. The workload, he is taking every single step snap with the starters in preseason. He's going to catch passes. He's going to run the ball. This might be a little bit of a better offense than we're giving it credit for. The offensive line stinks, but Najee Harris does not. So uh, I like Najee because the volume floor is just so fucking high. Then I have Gibson down at 10. That's right around where ECR and ADP is. We know the upside because he's also an athletic specimen. Problem is JD McKissick so far in preseason with the starters, JD McKissick has taken basically every single third down. And this is why people loved Gibson going into this year, because we thought he was going to take more of a role on the offensive side of things when it comes to passing work. And that might be the case. Maybe they pass the ball more to him on first and second down. However, it doesn't look like he's going to be playing much on third downs. And that is going to cap his upside because in two minute drills and four minute drills, that's when running backs, you know, rack up an extra two to three targets a game. And that's super valuable over the long run. So Gibson, you know, we'll we'll watch the final preseason game and see if they get him involved more on third down. But right now it's looking like J.D. McKissick is still taking that role. Gibson should still be super involved on early down. So I still like him. You know, he's going to be the goal line back. This is a decent offensive line. Should be a more explosive offense overall. But with Gibson, it just might not be there without third downs. And then here's the first guy that I'm a lot lower on than consensus, and that's Nick Chubb. And this is where that that whole spiel I gave you in the beginning kind of comes into play. Again, like Nick Chubb, great running back. And honestly, I'm not going to be mad if he's my RB1 or if I take him in the middle of the second round as my RB2. That'd be phenomenal. He, like Derrick Henry, doesn't have that upper tier statistical upside that these pass catching running backs have, right? Because you can bust off best case scenario, Derrick Henry, 2000 yards uh, on the ground last year and still be four five, six points per game behind the Dalvin Cooks and the Christian McCaffrey. So with Nick Chubb, I'm not going to think that he's going to catch more passes until I see it. And for right now, I just think in any sort of PPR league, his upside is, is capped. He's going to be phenomenal, right? Great runner, great floor, great offensive line, going to be a really good offense. But again, Kareem Hunt's still there. Kareem Hunt's still going to take a lot of touches. So with Nick Chubb, He's my RB11. I don't, I don't, I mean, listen, I think guys like Gibson, I think guys like Harris, Eckler, whatever, probably have more overall upside than Nick Chubb because he's not involved in the passing game. And those things add up so quickly. Uh, Same thing with Jonathan Taylor. I started to move him down like most people did after the news of Wentz and Quentin Nelson, but sounds like both of them are going to be back on the field sooner rather than later. Maybe miss a game, maybe miss two games at worst, but I think Jonathan Taylor will be fine. He'll take the workload uh, as we expect it to happen in his second year. Obviously blew the fuck up over the stretch run last year, and he's looking uh, dynamite. So I'll, I'm fine with Jonathan Taylor in the mid-second. Joe Mixon I have about the same as ECR. J.K. Dobbins right there, right there. Are there any big changes down the list? I'm pretty spot on with with the rest of ECR and ADP from running backs like 14 through 22 or so. Darrell Henderson, I'm three spots higher than on ADP. That's, again, probably just due to the delay on ADP. Chase Edmonds, I just recently moved up. I'm six spots higher on Chase Edmonds than ECR and six spots higher than ADP. Chase Edmonds is a guy that I was not too privy on earlier on in the offseason because we've seen Cliff Kingsbury just not want to give him touches. Just never a guy that he gave a big workload to unless every other running back was dead. But this preseason's got me a little bit higher on Chase Edmonds, just given the role that we've seen him play. Like James Conner's been kind of banged up on COVID. And in the game, Chase Edmonds has taken basically all of the touches and snaps with the first team offense. And we've seen reports that Chase Edmonds, uh, it's his starting role to to lose. I don't think we'll ever see him become like an 18 to 20 touch per touch per game, per touch per game, per, 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 per guy. But he, sh- he should still see like a really, really solid level of volume in this offense. And if this offense is anywhere near what I think it could be with Kyler under the helm, DeAndre Hopkins, Rondell Moore, they bring in Rodney Hudson to shore up the offensive line. I think Chase Edmonds is starting to move into like a really sneaky, a really sneaky, sneaky good play as a low end RB2. So I'm moving him up just based on what we've seen this preseason, his usage with the ones 
and reports out of camp. So I like Chase Edmonds and then right below him, Damian Harris. I also talked about Damian Harris on my video on Sunday and must own running backs. Love me some Damian Harris is clearly his backfield as the starter. Ramondre Stevenson has not got a single snap with the starters in preseason, despite him looking like the next fucking coming of Eddie Lacy. He is uh, he's doing it against like second and third string defenses, guys, and he's not doing it with the first team offense in New England. Sony Michelle is getting barely any snaps with the starters either. So it is Damian Harris. It is James White. Those are the only two in this backfield. I think Damian Harris finishes the year with somewhere between eight to ten rushing touchdowns and averages 14 to 16 carries per game. This is going to be a ground and pound offense with a much better offense because Cam is going to be healthy or if Mac Jones is under center, he's going to be fine. The offensive line is very good, underrated, good defense. They're going to want to win their games by handing the ball to Damian Harris. So I'm not sure why I did top 22 rather than 20 or 24 or 25. That's just the way the fucking coochie crumbled today. But I hope that you guys enjoyed or found some value from this, right? Fucking value sucks today. Let's, uh, let's, uh, oh, all the boys are joining the E-Town Get Down League. Let's go. If you missed Animals uh, 18 Hours in the Woods punishment, we put that up on the channel yesterday, last night, I think it was, at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so go check that out. You got a lot of videos to catch up on. We're doing them every single day, 5 a.m. Eastern time every day. And every once in a while, we just drop random ones like Animal being in the woods for 18 hours because that was his punishment for losing our fantasy football league last year. So if you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we're doing videos like this every single day. Again, 5 a.m. Eastern time. Hit the thumbs up button. If you want all of my rankings, again, those are available on bdge.store. On the homepage, you'll see a draft guide section that will let you purchase access to the draft guide. Okay, that's all I got for you today. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow.